Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Okwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinika. Well done, Dr. Abati. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm Perfect. Good. I'm good. Perfect. Powerful woman. Good morning. Abi, you're not a girl. Am I? You know that. You are a powerful woman. Ayo, Ayo, Ayo was trending yesterday. I stand with Ayo. For defending our with, nation. Yes, I stand For with defending Ayo. Nigeria. Kudos to you. Let me, I have a tweet that you, you sent out yesterday. I love that tweet. I stand like, well with done, Ayo. Ayo. And Ayo wrote yesterday Nigeria, great nation, great people. Anywhere, everywhere we go, we shine. We are assets, we are diligent. Place us in the right environment, and on that great leadership, we thrive. In us people, we survive anywhere we go. A very special nation by God's grace. Yes, sir. Thank you, Oji. Thank you. Well done. Bye. Well done. That's all we strive for, the truth in journalism. Good morning. Rufai, Oji, I, I said despite the fact that I was not, I was not feeling well. <laughs> yes. I still caused my wounds. I was tweeting. I stand with Ayo. I love, I I, love it. Me, and they were facts. <laughs> I, I can't see your matter and rest, honestly. They were facts on ground that what Ayo said was correct. Yes, Ayo was trending And the next was, was calling yesterday. a married woman of caliber and timber girl. At least we know we are I not beg girls. With, uh, beg <laughs> well done, Ayo. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis launched his 2024 presidential campaign on Wednesday. The 44-year-old Republican, an outspoken cultural conservative, initially announced his decision in a video posted on social media. DeSantis then tried to discuss his presidential bid in a first-of-its-kind conversation with Twitter CEO Elon Musk on Twitter Spaces, but the audio stream crashed repeatedly, making it virtually impossible for most users to hear the announcement in real time. I'm Ron DeSantis, and I'm running for president to lead our great American comeback. In Nigeria, President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu was conferred today, May 25th, with the highest national honor in the country, the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic by President Muhammad Buhari, while Vice President-elect Senator Kashim Shatima was conferred with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger at the State House Conference Center in Abuja. Then, a biopic titled Last Man Standing about the President-elect will premiere on Friday, May 26, the last weekend before he resumes duty as president of Nigeria. The film, which stars Latif Adedimeji, who played the role of Tinubu, centers around his life during his tenure as governor of Lagos State. Last Man Standing was directed by Tunde Olaloye. The premiere will take place at the NAF Conference Center and Suites in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Under sports, the Flying Eagles of Nigeria defeated Gli Azzurini of Italy 2-0 on Wednesday in their second Group D game at the 2023 FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Argentina, where 24 nations are vying for the trophy with traditional powers England, France, Brazil, and the hosts among the favorites to win it all. The 2-0 victory takes Nigeria to the summit of the group with six points. The Flying Eagles will play Brazil on Saturday in their final group game. You must understand the touch of your hand makes my pulse react. Finally, under entertainment, tributes continue to pour in for the queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner, the unstoppable singer and stage performer who teamed with husband Ike Turner for a dynamic run of hit records and live shows in the 1960s and 70s. Tina Turner was born Anna Mae Bullock in Tennessee she rose to fame as the lead singer of the I Cantina Turner Ray and survived her horrifying marriage of 16 years to Ike Turner 
to become a superstar in her 40s at a time when most of her peers were on their way down with the chat topping song, What's Love Got to Do With It? What's love got to do, got to do with it? Ina Turner sold more than 150 million records worldwide, won 12 Grammys, and was voted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1991 and 2021. Turner was also honored at the Kennedy Center in 2005 with Beyonce and Oprah Winfrey among those praising her. Tina's life became the basis for a film, a Broadway musical, and an HBO documentary in 2021 that she called her public farewell, titled Tina. I'm a girl from a cotton field that put myself above the destruction and the mistakes. And I'm here for you. Tina Turner was one of the world's most popular entertainers, known for a car of pop, rock, and rhythm and blues with favorites like Proud Mary, Not Bush City Limits, River Deep, Mountain High, and We Don't Need Another Hero, a song featured in the 1985 film Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, which she starred alongside Mel Gibson. Tina Turner died on May 24 after a long illness, peacefully in her home in Kuznak, near Zurich. She was 83 years old. You're simply the best. Than all the rest. Oh, you're the best. Simply the best. May her soul rest in perfect peace. Dr. Abati, wasn't she such a phenomenal woman, a trailblazer? She set so many standards. I mean, she began her journey after she turned 40, really. I mean, her success, her career blossomed. I mean, look at her with her amazing awards. And she has been recognized in different fields. I mean, I, am, I was hot. I was shocked. Actually, I was on the treadmill when I heard. I almost stumbled. But I'd like to tell you my journey with Tina Turner. I mean, she, I, I, I knew who she was from my mother, my late mother. My mother used to play Tina Turner every Sunday before we go to church. Every Sunday was such an inspirational Sunday for us. And guess what? I learned how to catwalk watching Tina Turner. Her legs are simply the best. Dr. Bati, quick comment. Well, she me. was indeed, uh, yeah. you know, a source of inspiration to the younger generation, mm -hmm. a role model, a legend, an icon. So we're not surprised that uh, she also influenced you uh, in terms of uh, how you sashay on the, on the, on the catwalk. Yes. <laughs> I know your signature style. <laughs> When you swing it. Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe. <laughs> but Tina Turner. Last night, I you know, was as I said, icon legend. Yes. She had been ill. She was diagnosed with uh, intestinal cancer in 2016. In uh, 2017, she had a kidney transplant. But what many will remember was the fact that, uh, you know, she enchanted millions of fans across the world, you know, with her music, with her confidence, with her panache, spinky hair. Uh, High heels, you know, yes. uh, and, and all of that. Capture the imagination of the world with such songs as uh, What's Love Got to Do with It? Mm -hmm. uh, Emmanuel Efeni quoted that earlier, but there are also others, uh, Proud Mary, and also, you know, Everything's Gonna Be Fine. Yeah, watching uh, What's Love Got to Do with It uh, yes. was what made me love Tina Turner the more, because mm. obviously, like I said, that's where I learned how to catwalk. So, tributes have been pouring in. Mick Jagger, uh, the uh, uh, leader of the uh, Rolling Stones says she was a superbly talented performer. Joe Biden says she was uh, a once-in-a-generation uh, talent. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, she will be greatly missed. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we were reviewing her career, how she started in the late 50s with her husband, Ike Turner, and she ended up becoming 
the uh, major attraction in that uh, band until you know differences led to the collapse of that marriage and she went out on her own and she went on to build for the following you know five decades plus six decades in total you know a, a fabulous career I in know. music to use the familiar term that we have mentioned again this morning sold millions of records all over the world one you know between eight or twelve Grammy Awards, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite an achievement. Yes. Well, we commiserate with our family, and we extend to our family and all our friends and fans over the decades. You know, our heartfelt condolences. condolences. Yes, Ayo, she was such a powerful woman. Sure. What was the thing you admire the most? The tenor okay, tenor. Thank you. I'm glad I have an opportunity yes. to speak about her because when I think about her beyond her musical prowess, I think she's a beacon for many women in terms of the woman who walked away. I love the fact that she started quite late. So for a number of women who are afraid of starting out, she's that hope that I can do it. She walked out of a turbulent, abusive marriage in 1978, when it was largely unpopular to be a woman who is out there and who is divorced. But she had endured such abuse that she had to run away with 36 cents and just a mobile, mobile credit card on her. And with that, she ran as far as possible. For as many women who are in abusive relationships, it's a symbol of hope that you don't have to stay and die there. And then beyond that, post that, despite the fact that at that time her success was tied to Ike Turner because it was a teen and yeah, Ike Turner show, she still went on to create herself, recreate herself and succeed. What a woman. Beyond her long legs, her powerful voice, you know, making her the queen of rock and roll, she was also an iconic woman and a symbol for every woman who wants to move forward. An absolute trailblazer. Rufai, what was the thing and, you And for me, it's a spirit. Yes. It's that can do spirit. It's that spirit that says, I'm not tied to anything. I'm not tied to abuse. I'm not tied to reproach. I can get up and walk away when it's time. And bet on herself. I remember, you know, the story making town. And when you watch, you know, flashback documentaries, yeah. you see a lot of, oh, once she left Ike, it was all over. Yeah. You know, because there were many partnerships. It was just like Sonny and Cher Bono. Yes. You know, and they felt, oh, once she left Ike, Turner was all over for her. Mm -hmm. But she reinvented herself and she didn't do it well. She had successes that eclipsed what she had with Ike Turner. Absolutely. And you know the sweet part of the story? She found love again. Yes. So it just pretty much reminds you of another song of Cher that says, do you believe in love after love? Yes. You know, the fact that after she left Ike, then she found love again in the Swiss man. She found peace. She found comfort. And, you know, I, I, I read a very glowing tribute Oprah Wilfrey wrote for her. And it's just amazing, you yes. know. It's, 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 it's really, really amazing. Absolutely. It's a life of love. Well, anyway, she sang What's Love Got to Do With yes, This. Yes, It's did. a life of love. Well, may her soul rest in perfect peace. The queen of rock and roll will live on. Well, more on powerful women. Let's continue what's trending. Aisha Buhari, the wife of Nigeria's outgoing president, Mohamed Buhari, has officially engaged Senator Oluremi Tinubu, wife of President-elect Paula Ahmed Tinubu, acquainting her with the duties of the office of the First Lady of Nigeria. Aisha Buhari received her successor at the presidential villa in Abuja on Wednesday at an event that signaled the formal transition of official engagements in the office of the First Lady of Nigeria and handed over some documents to Remy Tinubu to serve as a guard towards piloting the affairs of the office. The outgoing First Lady is also said to have handed over the seal of the African First Lady's peace mission to Remy Tinubu being the chief host of all the spouses of the African heads of state. Well, during the ceremony, Aisha Buhari expressed confidence in the ability of the incoming first lady to deliver the task ahead. You know I'm coming to you, Aya, on this story. I mean, <laughs> the first thing is, I mean, we know that the office of the first lady is unconstitutional, right? I mean, I guess that is why this story turned a lot of heads. But let me take one Twitter reaction. Um, this person wrote, hand over what? Is the office of the first lady provided for in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? 
Keyamo, where are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know why Ade asked where, where Keyamo is at this point. I mean, I heard Dr. Bati talking about Keyamo this morning, yeah. about how he enjoyed the privileges of he his did. office, and now he wants it scrapped. <laughs> what do you think of the office? Okay. So I certainly would have started on that note, mm. that um, I, I thought the office of the First Lady yeah. is not recognized by the Nigerian Constitution. Yeah. And famously, the President, Mohamed Bouhari, had said that he wasn't going to have that office. Absolutely. He even talked about it in a famous interview where he had said she would be in my room and the other room. That's where the, the other room came from. Yeah. But we saw that um, Mrs. Aisha Bouhari emerged to be perhaps one of the very influential first ladies we've seen with a retinue of staff as well because she had her own office and had um, you know special assistants who were attached to the president's office or who were for, for the president but attached to her own office now in terms of handover perhaps we should begin to have a conversation around is it realistic to not have the office of the first lady because if we're going to do it and spend money i hope we we'll also re, you know review the records of how much was spent on the office of you know in the office that was is not constitutionally recognized so the budget that goes in there is it should we have one and if we have one should we make it proper so it doesn't go under the, under the table a lot of attention is on the incoming first lady whether she's constitutionally recognized or not senator lu emitinubu and she has laid her record out. That even though she served as you know two-time first lady of Lagos State, 12 years in the, in the Senate, this is a different ball game. She's the mother of a nation. We're looking forward to her representing that office well. Absolutely. And again, like she's mentioned, humanitarian activities, and it'll be good to see what she wants to push as her agenda as first lady. Absolutely. Well, all right, let's take another story. This time in the United Kingdom, universities across the country have opposed the new immigration rule for foreign students, restricting them from bringing family members into the country from 2024 because they say it will worsen their financial pressure. On Tuesday, the Home Office also announced that foreign students will be stopped from switching from the student's visa route to a work visa until their studies have been completed. Additionally, there will be a review of the required funds students must have to demonstrate that they can work after themselves and their dependents. While reacting to the new rules, UK International, a body of universities across the UK, said the move was a threat to the country's global success as a top destination for international talent and needed to be considered very carefully. Rufai, you weren't here when we discussed this story, but I want to tie this um, story um, in Nigeria with it before I come to you. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, the chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Access Bank Holdings, Dr. Herbert Wigwe on Wednesday, laid the foundation to start a private university in his hometown in the Quera local government area of River State. The institution, which will be called Wigwe University, is situated on 400 hectares of land, which will accommodate an estimated 200 buildings. Herbert Wigwe, during the foundation lane, said the school will be a world-class educational institution with students spending one year of the academic period on exchange abroad. The bank CEO, in a video that has now gone viral, also stated that when the university is complete, no university in the whole of Africa will rival it. Let's take a look. Everybody waiting here, eh? this is now on a project. We're going to protect them with anything we want to get. No university will go there like this. No be for Nigeria or for Africa. Jay! On my life, on my children, nothing will compare to this university. All of our children, eh? Yes. Now this school they will go. Jay! 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 We go already by next week. In many buildings will start. Amen. Thousand people will they work for here. Amen. Amen. We don't want security problems. No, 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 no,
it's nice to see a CEO speak Fijian English. Yes, now, sir. all of us get this university. I love it. Right. I love it. I mean, I think and this is a phenomenal idea from And Herbert kudos Green, to him Green, Green. because uh, we need to get kudos, a lot of education yes. back into Nigeria. Absolutely. Kudos to him on that. And if you make that university world class, a lot of people will come there. Yes. And the greatest gift and legacy you can give is education. I tell people that every time. So kudos to him. Forget the fact that he was, you know, he had to tell them because he had to make them understand yes. in their own local language yes. the need for the university. Concerning the UK universities, yes, they do make a lot of money out of Nigeria. And you can't deny the fact. And a lot of the universities in the UK have been hemorrhaging cash. Why? You also what happened with COVID and the fact that, you know, they've had other problems within. But most importantly, it is the foreign students that bring most of the cash. Mm. And this new attempt on these visual restrictions definitely might affect their foreign student inflow. Yes, that's what they're saying. But what is that also telling you? That is telling you that there's also a big opportunity for revenue for Nigeria in the education sector if we develop it. Absolutely. So maybe when, if we have Wigwe University and the likes come on stream, then we can have people from abroad come like they used to come back in this to our universities. That is the actual point. Dr. Bati, 30 seconds. Okay, quickly, congratulations to Herbert Wigwe. What he was trying to do there is to get the community to have a sense of ownership, yes. of participation. And community involvement is always very important once you carry them along. And he was saying, look, there shouldn't be any security problems. Yes. He doesn't want in his shop, I think that's the name of the, of yes. the place in the query land. He doesn't want any Omonile syndrome, you know, because once the people see the project as theirs, then they will, they will, they will support it. Absolutely. Finally, it, this is a, a good example also of giving back Absolutely. to society. Absolutely. We're glad that he's not repatriating his money abroad. Yes. He wants to create jobs. He yes. wants to promote education. He wants to leave a legacy. Absolutely. And that's why. And he's very clever. Yes. You know. Well, uh, congratulations, Herbert Vigwe and the people of River State. Well, thank you very much for your great contribution, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.